Hello. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, the 9th of uh, November, and those of us who are here in Marrakesh at the 22nd Conference of Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change woke early this morning to the momentous news that the United States of America has elected uh, Mr. Donald Trump as their next president. Um, all day long I've been fielding questions from journalists and media, what does it mean here? And I have three responses. The first one is that we're in shell shock. We didn't expect it. We don't have a plan B. We're now trying to figure out what happens. Uh, and I'm sure we will figure it out. Uh, the second one is what does it, how does it affect us here in Marrakesh over the next week or more that we will be here in, in COP22? It doesn't really. Um, president Obama still is the president in the White House. Mr. Trump doesn't get to go into the White House until January. Uh, the delegation here are President Obama's delegation. Uh, it, they have already agreed to the Paris Agreement, which has come into force, and hence the negotiations here are about implementing that. There is nothing really um, earth-shattering in terms of new agreements that are going to be done here, so we don't expect the negotiations to be derailed in any way by this new uh, news that Mr. Trump will become the next president. The third and perhaps most important bit is how is he, when he comes into the White House, going to deal with the climate change issue? Not so much about the agreements and the UNFCC, but dealing with the reality of climate change. And he has made some very unsettling statements that he doesn't believe in it, he's going to repeal things that the, uh, President Obama has done. That would be extremely unfortunate if he does that. We hope that between now and when he gets into the White House, the U.S. scientists, the federal scientists from NOAA and NASA and and various other federal agencies will brief him on the reality of the science of climate change, which is very, very real, and that he will take cognizance of that and weigh it much more strongly than the kind of denialist uh, ideological information that he has been receiving from some people so far. We shall see how much that affects him. But in the long run, it doesn't matter. Uh, the world has already decided to tackle climate change. Every single country has decided to do that. And from now on, it's actually the developing countries, countries like China, India, Brazil, South Africa, and many others, the vulnerable countries included, are taking action. And their actions is what matters, and their collective action is what matters. And from now on, it is really up to China to lead the way. And I see China taking a very constructive attitude trying to tackle the problem of climate change, both in terms of reducing its own emissions, but also in terms of adapting to the impacts of climate change, and leading initially a South-South cooperation and collaboration, and moving that into a global cooperation and collaboration. So in the long run, we will have to follow China. And if China does the right thing, we will all follow them to do the right thing, and the United States will have to follow whether they like it or not. And indeed, Mr. Trump himself will end up following China without any choice.